This is the Go Maluku Podcast. Hey, what's good, everyone? Gazali Horrell here with a new episode of the Go Maluku Podcast, um, episode five or day five of uh, COP27. It's Friday. As you can see all around me, people are trying to uh, yeah, get the hell away from COP27, from the, um, yeah, from the venue, um, probably to Nama Bay, oh, sorry, Nama Bay, uh, get a drink, get a feed. Um, one thing that you definitely know is that places are open uh, late over here in Egypt, which is very uh, fortunate because uh, the previous COP uh, in Glasgow, that was a nightmare. Uh, once we, yeah, once we had the, we were done with the negotiations, we went into town trying to get a feed, and yeah, most of the times it um, was no luck. The, everything was closed, so you actually had to yeah, eat somewhere at uh, KFC, McDonald's, or the usual fish and chips. So yeah, this is pretty good. Um, it is now, well, approximately 7 p.m. And um, yeah, you can already see uh, the, the, the final meetings are, are, are about to conclude. Substa as well as SBI, their, um, yeah, their deadlines are tonight. So the documents that all these negotiation streams have to uh, prepare, um, yeah, they have to be uh, submitted to Substa as Substa will close um, and SBI will close tomorrow on Saturday. What that means is, is that next week we'll go into, into the high level, into the political process of uh, COP27. This week was mostly technical, preparing all the work, doing most of the work, and uh, yeah, the COP uh, will deal with the, the final, most sticky issues, apparently, or probably, and um, uh, which means for indigenous peoples um, this week we had a lot of uh, um, yeah participation oh uh, what is it like what i want to say like um access that, that's the word i was looking for but a lot of access to the yeah to the negotiations however um it is highly unlikely that we'll have just enough access or just equally access to uh to the negotiations uh once the political process starts all right, so, so you know what's, uh, what today's all about. Um, started off, as always, with caucus, uh, Indigenous Peoples Caucus, and there was, uh, to, again, report back on loss of damage, as well as Article 6. The interesting part was, was that, that we had relatives um, from um, yeah, the Amazon, uh, from various countries in the Amazon, um, yeah, taking a stage. And relatives in this case were like leaders from indigenous people's organizations and indigenous NGOs, um, yeah, bringing in, yeah, their issues and yeah, most of them were actually talking about the cover markets. Uh, so you do see that there is a yeah a, a emerging um, awareness about uh, the yeah the the importance of of, of cover markets around. For, um, around indigenous peoples. What that means is, is what I hope it also means is that indigenous peoples will now also start to, yeah, start to follow track or follow the negotiation processes that are dealing with, uh, with Article 6. Um, for example, at COP27, we had 62, 64, and 68. And um, yeah, and even though, yeah, these are um, they ha it has been adopted in Glasgow. It is still ongoing. There's still, um, yeah, still issues that need to be resolved politically. So uh, that is what, what I experienced at, at the at caucus this morning. You did see, uh, yeah. So I ad addressed that, brought up the the, yeah, the the updates from the negotiations that were happening yesterday. And also, like the strategy in terms of the yeah the on, on loss and damage. What is something that I am super aware of, aware of, and, and, and conscious of is the is the door. When I talk in the caucus, I keep an eye on the door. I don't actually look at the people on the front front row 
or the back row or people that are recognized, I don't actually pay attention to them. I pay attention to the, to the door as in trying to see like who walks in and where, and which is for me an indication to not go into detail uh, because you never know who walks in to through the, through the door if you want to share some yeah, strategic stuff in terms of negotiations for, for indigenous peoples. Um, that was, that, that was uh, the caucus. Um, then I went directly to the, yeah, the, 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 the meetings on 6-2 and 6-4 and 6-8. And you did see that there was, yeah, there was, there was some overnight movement. Um, there has been, for example, on 6.8, uh, on non-market approaches, there was a, uh, a in, inf, inf or informal informal meeting um, among states to hash out the, the sticky issues, the, the, the problems that they were uh, they were all uh, were dealing with, and um, we did not have access to that particular inf inf because that, that is usually happens um, yeah in the the meetings zone that observers or and or indigenous peoples do not have access to. What was interesting about 6.8 today was there's there's still not a clean text. So the text was still, um, yeah, still a lot of brackets and options uh, by our count or by the count of the co-facilitators. Um, there is approximately 100 brackets in the text still that need to be resolved. Um, which is an indication that um, there's, yeah, either they have to make some bold moves, some bold choices, or uh, they have to start uh, thinking about sending uh, the text to the, um, yeah, the, the, the political segment of, of COP27. Um, so, and this is, yeah, so th this is what we're looking at probably is, um, they will go into another inf inf today. Again, Indigenous peoples do not have access to that. And the, what I've learned so far is that Substa Chair has extended the deadline uh, for 6.8 to uh, yeah, tomorrow morning. Um, no later because tomorrow um, evening, the closing plenary, uh, the joint closing plenary of Substa as well as SBI will, will, will start. Um, so they have to conclude. Um, the, in terms of the strategy of indigenous peoples, what we've been doing actually since the beginning of, of COP27 is using the, the, the language that we have been already been using um, in the negotiations in Bonn and see if that is still relevant and if that should be or should not be amended so that we can uh, uh, for our position paper over here in, in, in Egypt. Um, in terms of the um, yeah, Article 6, quite fast because of the, uh, what happened in, um, in, the, um, in the weekend before COP, uh, we were able to uh, build a position paper on, uh, in, our, in, in relation to our uh, yeah, into our views and our recommendations um, in terms of uh, the yeah the six four six point four supervisory body. Um, that is a position paper is something that is short and sweet, one page, no more, and I don't mean like one page and like font size uh, seven normal font size and the page is, uh, yeah, this one page. It's clearly like, who is it from? What is a little bit of context? Where is it for? What is the language proposal, like specific language proposal that you do and where do you want it? That's it, that, that, that is the position paper that you want to create. Um, we did that for Article 6 quite fast on Monday uh, with a position paper as well as a press release already sorted by Monday afternoon around 1 p.m. And we started using that for our bilateral meetings or with, in our advocacy uh, with, with parties as well as other constituencies. 
Um, another position paper that we started building was on loss and damage. The team covers both Article 6 as well as loss and damage. Again, one page, and that was kind of a little bit harder because the, the basis for the position paper was the advocacy paper that we, that we created in Bonn. Uh, however, the advocacy paper is a two-page paper and not a one-page. And the position paper always needs to be one page. Um, so the advocacy paper was, not, was, well, it was too broad, so we not had to specify it, amend it a little bit, so that it became a position paper for loss and damage. Um, the whole team was, was working on it, tweaking it up until the point that, uh, yeah, we had to reconsider. Like, is it, is it, what is the wise decision to make? Do you refer back or defer back to the, um, the advocacy paper, or do you keep workshopping your way towards uh, getting a, uh, yeah, a, a position paper on yeah, on loss and damage, where it might be that you, yeah, that your language become much more abstract and not specific, whereas you want the language to be as specific as possible. Um, that actually caused me to think about like, well, what is this position paper for? Again, uh, language is informed by strategy. And your strategy is informed by the landscape. What are you? What are you seeing? And what? What are the movements that are being being made? It's like a chess game. Um, you read the board. I did see, or we did see, that in terms of loss and damage, that in terms of priorities, finance was going to be. Uh, yeah, is is a it's a hot hot topic. Not only a hot topic but it's also a, a, a topic that is avoided by the vast majority of the developed countries. So um, that was uh, being dealt with. I th I'm, I'm fairly sure that that will be dealt with uh, in, a, in, a, in a couple of years. The problem of the issue that, for, from our point of view, is our verge of reading loss and damage and the, 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 um, um, including non-economic loss and damage into the work of uh, into, into the into the regime of, lo of loss and damage. If if there is no opportunity under the the, the work streams that you uh, that you that are there here at COP, you have to find something and where you can bring it under, uh, where you can address it, and that will also inform your position. Um, so we we found up. Like I said yesterday in, our, in my daily debrief, found a strategy and, I am, and we amended the, the, the language accordingly and now it's being put into motion and we, we, we're likely to have uh, um, yeah, some first uh, opportunities to, to share that uh, uh, particular uh, strategy or position paper um, with the important uh, persons um, soon. Again, at the earliest tomorrow, tomorrow morning. So there's two position papers, right? Uh, one on Article 6 and one on loss and damage. And uh, that doesn't mean that all our work will be focused on those two position papers or that we're only going to limit our uh, strategy in terms of um, those two position papers. Uh, it's actually, there are other things that we might find relevant and uh, we might, bring that into our conversations, into, into our bilateral meetings, and there might be uh, the need to develop or update a position paper. It might be. However, what you want to do with the position paper is to, um, yeah, to not uh, have it yeah, updated um, yeah, from time to time. Like you want to keep it um, ideally um, yeah, set fast for the duration of COP. Um, with, yeah, for the duration of COP. Uh, what we did in, in Glasgow, we updated at the final moment um, our position paper, and what it did was it actually confused uh, parties. It confused parties in terms of like, what do these people actually want? Uh, what are actually the priorities? Because that is, yeah, that's something that you want to outline in the position paper, like one page, 
And these are the, like the, the minimal things that you want to see reflected uh, in the text. So um, that is in short actually what, uh, yeah, what we talked about the last couple of days. We finalized the two pair position papers. Looking forward to, to, well, definitely Sunday. Sunday's the day off over here at, up here in Sharm El Sheikh or here at COP. Um, and tomorrow, I have another you know, set of meetings. Interesting to see what, um, what parties will, will, uh, yeah, will discuss at the closing of, of uh, Substa and SBI. And um, what I believe that indigenous people should, should be super conscious of right now is, yeah, we are negotiating. We are yeah, making sure that um, yeah, we are going to um, yeah, push for the priorities that we have. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we should only it should only be limited to COP. Uh, that there's also um, yeah work to be done after COP, uh, leading up to Bonn, and, from, and then from Bonn leading up to um, uh, uh, UAE um, as well. So that is something that is that I've been and I've said in the caucus today, uh, and to make sure that yeah we're all on the same page, we're all on are aware that yeah, work must needs to be done and um, that we cannot go into um, yeah, um, into a beauty sleep hibernation uh, once we uh, yeah once we leave bond um, so uh, yeah it is it is time it's time to uh, yeah to assess take the stock take uh, to, to look at um, to wait for a subsequent closing plenary, what is actually on the table, um, and yeah, that, that's what's about what's what's left to to happen for the for the next couple of hours. Time has flown by. There's a lot has happened. We've done a lot, done a lot of things. I'm super tired, uh, as you can see, and the the hair running my running away from my face and uh, my bags underneath my eyes. Um, however, super excited though. Super excited to gear up for uh, week number two and to, yeah, looking forward to reinforcements. That reinforcement will arrive um, as I've already have, some of them have already arrived today. Look very much looking forward to working with them. Unfortunately, there's quite a number that are leaving as well. Uh, very sad, however, um, that's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to see that there's fresh blood in a way is coming in on the next couple of days. Um, yeah, so um, song of the day that actually, yeah, what's, what's time's flown by. So I discussed it, um, yeah, b before I started recording this and I think South Side of Bombay would be uh, the best one to uh, to cover the, the yeah, the sentiment of today and the last week. Sorry, we haven't even. Sorry, I, did, I shouldn't say the last week because we're not done yet. There's still one day of this week. So at least that that, that describes the sentiment of the last couple of days, and um, the time has flown by. So south side of Bombay, uh, for all my relatives from Aotearoa, um, they'll probably re remember that. Um, the movie Once Were Warriors is uh, South South of Bombay. What's the time race to wolf? I think that will be the uh, yeah the, the the song actually that would uh, best describe today um, definitely today and the last couple of days. So hope that you guys all um, everyone will stick around for episode what six COP twenty seven daily debrief episode six is tomorrow. This was COP twenty seven daily debrief. Day 5, Episode 5. See ya.
My friends, I hope you enjoyed this. Please consider to subscribe, to comment, and to share this video on your socials.